hello, 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 fine people of Greenville Grace. I got Ben in the house. Woo -woo. It's I. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell we're not going to be able to get, no. get through this. Yo, hit us up with, hey, you guys got questions about uh, life group questions. They're starting to come out. Um, ben Preach, you got any questions about that? Please make sure you're texting those uh, questions to us at 937-404-1207. But before I get to this, brother, I want to say today's my first official day here at work, and I am enjoy enjoying it. Dude, it's been a joy. My man. Yeah, my man. I'm excited to have you. <laughs> well, enough yeah. of, enough about me. Let's let's jump How to that. Huh? I thought you were going to go in more detail about like what your job well, is. And... Oh, well, they, they... No, no. Okay. All right, all fine, that. Yeah. But I did some some stuff and some things today. Okay, yeah. that's all I'm gonna say. Some stuff and some things. Yeah. But but hey, man, I thought your sermon on Sunday was very impactful to me. Oh, thank you. And um, I thought from you've all automatically have been growing and going somewhere from when we first started hearing you at Elevate. My daughter loves loves it when you unpack the word. Oh, that's uh, you're one of the reasons why she keeps coming to Elevate um, and wants to flourish in her uh, relationship with Christ. So I so so thank you for that. Um, but man, you're 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 continuing to incline, and I you know of course you're going to be humble about it. But I wanted to tell you that your preaching just keeps getting better and better and better. And I can go into all the details of why because I love studying preachers and styles and their outline but man there was so much thoughtfulness around what you were what you were saying you allowed space and room for reflection and i thought the sequence of events and where you were going just transitions transitioned so well into one another and so man i really really like was first of all like wow like man you're 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 getting better and better and better and better and that's what Appreciate we that. ought to do, yeah. right? As yeah, pastors, absolutely. that's the whole point. Absolutely. Um, but man, it's it's good because we, you know, we're blessed because we have a a, a, a plethora of elders who can preach the word, and it's good to have a youth pastor who is just not just saying these little trite things, yeah. you know. Um, with the youth, you're you're feeding them, you're you're giving them some meat, man, not just milk. You are getting in there, and I think they're eating it, eating it up. Would you say no, so? hundred percent. I would honestly. I was telling, yeah, it might have been Amanda, my wife, uh, that it has been really cool to watch the group of students that we have right now, from seventh all the way up. This is probably the most spiritually mature group of kids that I have ever had to interact with. And what's really cool is like when we go to like D now or or camp and. Uh, they did expository this year at camp. Mm -hmm. uh, Kevin Jones from Cedarville. Yeah. He uh, he was, you know, taking text, small bits of it, and just dissecting it. Sure. And our students were eating it up because it's like that's what they're accustomed to. Well, tell them real quick what expository is. So expository preaching is when you take small bits of text and you just break it down for what the text is actually saying. So it's not taking necessarily the topic of what's saying, but it's actually digging into the word. So while a topical pastor could use maybe um like let's say the issue with lust they can take mm -hmm. a whole chapter of something and just kind of run through it and it all points to the issue of lust but yeah. however if you do expository you can take one or two verses and just see like this is what paul or uh john or whoever the author may be is yeah. trying to get out for it so right. and the best part about it is it's we're doing it sequentially mm -hmm. so it's like mm -hmm. we're going straight through so we're being confronted with things that may be uncomfortable right but there's no skipping it because exactly. we're going exactly through it. So right, you get to something <laughs> and you're like, oh uh, man, exactly. I don't want to say. But see, you're right. Expositional yeah. preaching, uh, we have to preach it line by line. We cannot Absolutely. escape it. So our own hearts are being convicted by what we're what we are reading in the word, and Absolutely. so is the body. Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah, that's. That is the yeah. best way. Absolutely. <laughs> the Our only way. The students love it too, which is, it's been really cool. They've been a lot more engaged and you can kind of start to taste it now. Like they, you can see it and you can just see like, 
they they thirst for the word mm -hmm. like if someone comes in and teaches a topical it's like they can take what they said and take it to heart and be like that was a really good but it's like sometimes they're just like i just want the word yeah. like let yeah. that wash over me and it's it's been really cool to see that yeah that transition in students so that's cool man i mean i remember one sunday and i i hear people yeah. mentioning that when we come in and we see like the whole wall dedicated to students it's like wow yeah like that is inspirational to know this church isn't going to die with us absolutely it like because it's easy to preach to just us we're yeah. we're nerds yeah when it comes to, to theology and doctrine and stuff but for young kids to to to, to um, come to the knowledge of christ and and be hungry for it. Absolutely, that's amazing. Yeah. That that's like oh, I feel man, I, I'm getting chills right yeah, now. Yeah. Um, that's the Lord at work, hundred percent, and putting the right people in place strategically, hundred percent. So, Amen. We yeah. love it. Yeah. Well, tell us how you doing, man. Doing well. Doing well. Uh, a little just took a week off from youth to kind of catch up and build a rest. We've had a busy kind of uh, year, and so. Uh, this last week allowed Bradley King, my intern, to really take the reins and run with it for a while. And uh, well, not for a while, just for mm -hmm. a week. Um, but students were saying he did a great job. Yeah. New staff said he was great, did a great job. They said that it was like I wasn't even missing. Oh, wow. So uh, it was encouraging to hear that. Um, well, hopefully that doesn't mean. No, you he's know. not my replacement. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> He's gonna be. He's doing do great things, but this is my spot. <laughs> I call dibs on. It. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But yeah, so I, we've taken a break and uh, we're jumping right back into it. To First John, uh, we we've been going through a lot of Paul's letters, and now we went to John. Okay. Uh, and I think one of the biggest questions that we had over this past year from students who have put their faith in mm -hmm. is the assurance. Yeah. Like. How do I know that I know? Mm -hmm. And what's really cool is that John in the gospel said, I wrote these things so you know how to be saved. Mm -hmm. And first John he says that this way you can know if your faith is genuine, so you mm -hmm. can have assurance. Amen. And so we're able to go through verse by verse for that. Mm -hmm. And so we're going really slow through it, probably be in the five chapters for 20, 23 weeks. So that's dope. Yeah, that's I'm pretty dope. excited like about it. it. No problem. Well, hey man, let's get to a couple questions that yep. ha have come in. Um you did mention something yesterday, tons of good stuff um, that um, I, me in particular, I had a question about. Yeah. Um, it was a little convicting because there was a moment in my in my life where, um, man, I was just struggling with sin. Mm. And, you know, I wanted to follow the Lord. I wasn't pursuing him like I should have. Mm. Um, but I love the Lord yeah. and I wanted to grow. Um, but I wasn't growing. Yeah. But you mentioned yesterday, if you're not in constant pursuit of Christ, don't expect to help someone else. Hopefully I got that yeah, right. Yeah, you did. Um, so I'm thinking, man, like, what about all the times where I was messing up and yeah. falling short and I wasn't in pursuit of the Lord? I granted I did feel a little hypocritical yeah. to approach somebody and tell them yeah. about the goodness of, of the Lord. But when you said that, are you are you meaning that maybe if I'm not like I should have probably taken a back seat until like I had the pursuit of the Lord more our relationship with the Lord was more much more firm? I, I don't know if I would even say that. Um and because the reason why I, I wouldn't say that is because even later in the, the same term, I was saying that if you've been saved for a week mm. or 20 years, your calling's to go, right? Mm. And so I think that when we become stagnant or if we get to the part where, you know, we do struggle with sin because we're we're human, we are going to struggle with sin. That doesn't give us an excuse for it. That doesn't justify it by any means. But I'm trying to get at the point of if we are saying going to go help someone pursue Christ, mm -hmm. shouldn't we practice what we're also teaching? Mm -hmm. And so just because you're stagnant, I don't think that necessarily means, hey, maybe I should take a back seat. Mm -hmm. Unless it's really like if you're deep into right. sin or you're even questioning your salvation, yeah, maybe you okay. should pull okay. back. Okay. But if uh, you're just being stagnant where it's like, man, I, I want to grow. Like yeah. uh, I, I, I want to pursue these things, but some areas of my life I haven't quite given over. Mm -hmm. uh, practice what you teach. Mm -hmm. Pursue Christ. Mm -hmm. Because if you're pointing someone else to Christ, 
you know what you should be doing is pointing yourself back to Christ as well. And you should be running there. Amen. So uh, that's what I was trying to get at through that was just, I I don't necessarily think like it's a saying, Hey, don't do it at all. Yeah. But it's like, if you're going to do this, you should be all in, like understand what you're teaching. If we're saying that the gospel is transformed to the entire being of a person, Mm. it changes everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so if we're saying, okay, it changes everything for you then you have to understand that it also changes everything for me. Yeah, yeah. And so I think coming to that understanding is if we're going to point something, someone to freedom from their sin, the mm. bondage of sin and oh. hope of glory, mm. that we can be reminded of that as well. Mm. And so I think that's what I was trying to go at. It with. I appreciate that for clearing clearing that up. Yeah, um, and, I, and I, would, I would agree with that. And thank you for that. Um, because first of all, people are going to know. No. Yeah. You know, if I'm if I'm struggling in certain areas, right? Um, if I'm cert- you know, we all struggle, we all fall short. Yeah. But people are going going to know if I'm being sought in light, if yeah. I am walking in accordance uh, uh, with the footsteps of the Lord, because they they're going to see the sincerity yeah. that comes from me um, or not. Yeah. Um, so I think that's what, probably what you were. Yeah. People are watching. You said people yeah. are watching. Um, they're watching your life. And if there's any sniff or or hint of uh, disparity with your walk with Christ, it's not going, your your mission yeah. isn't going to be that impactful. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. I think uh, even in John, first John, you know, like I said, we're going through it. Uh, part of it, he's even saying the exact same thing that says if if you say that you are that you know him, but mm. do not keep his commands, mm. you, you're a liar and do not practice truth, right? Amen. And so he's saying on the other side of that, though, that a person who does abide in him is mm. the one who God's love is perfected. Oh wow! So you're living in accordance with what wow he's saying. So I, I think that was brilliant. I mean, like the connection that you just had there for me was uh, extremely helpful for that. Hey man, I love yeah. that. I love that. Okay. Well, question number two, um, man, like we were at the coffee shop today yep. and, um, this, this dude, I've always been afraid to like walk up to somebody and say, where's your walk with Christ? Or we haven't seen you at church lately or whatnot. Cause you know, I don't want to cause any conflict, but we're getting a coffee and he says, so tell me how, you know, so exactly what did you say? I just said, have you guys landed anywhere? <laughs> like, I just asked them. And I thought, even getting a, some coffee, which is like break time, <laughs> this dude is at work. And uh, of course, you know, th- yeah. um, they have a long conversation with us about yeah. it and we learn a lot. And yeah. But I'm like, man, um, but what would it look like to proclaim Christ? to someone who is like dealing like what could I do what could you do what do we say to someone who's dealing with like I don't know sickness sickness or or pornography issues or anything like that man yeah I think ultimately um again it goes back to first John for me like just if we're struggling with sin and, you know, it's very easy for us to look at. He he brings up in chapter one, you know, the difference between lightness and darkness. Mm-hmm. And then he talks about how uh, we should avoid sin. If we say that we do not sin, we mm-hmm. do not practice it. again. But the next verses in John chapter two, verse two, he says that he's the propitiation of all of our sins. Mm-hmm. And but in verse one, he says, but when we sin, you know, mm-hmm. because we are going to, mm-hmm. uh, that we have an advocate, Amen. Jesus Christ. Yeah. And so it's like, I, th- I think if we're struggling with that, how can we proclaim Christ mm-hmm. by reminding ourselves of who Christ is? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly the same way that mm-hmm. Paul did in Colossians chapter one, where he's saying, we're talking about the invisible image of God, mm-hmm. the image of the invisible God, mm-hmm. the creator of all things, the redeemer mm-hmm. of all things, the head of the church. Mm-hmm. He's not going after all these different things, what's wrong right now, but he's pointing them back to Christ. Right, right. And so uh, I think even if we're struggling with sin, we can be reminded, we can pr- proclaim Christ to ourselves, to others, mm-hmm. of that there is still hope. Yeah. Oh. But here's the difference with, with like, if we're talking about sin specifically, we have to understand that God's grace, He's gracious and He's merciful and He's mm-hmm. faithful and just to forgive. Yeah. At the same time, repentance is the big part of that 
confessing sin, I think, is one of the easiest things to do. Repentance of sin is probably one of the hardest things yes, to do. Yes, it is, sir. And so uh, when we talk about that, it's like, man, if, if we're going to say we're going to proclaim Christ, we know what his death was. We know what it accomplished. Why are we running back to the same well that leads to death Amen. when we're offered life right here? Right. So I think proclaiming Christ in that instance is reminding ourselves of who Christ is. Mm. Now, for a different circumstance, if someone's like on a deathbed or something, a family member, and it's like, man, how, how am I supposed to see God's glory in any of this? Mm. Well, I think there's another way you can, I mean, it's not going to help the situation by just going to someone and be like, hey, don't you know God's sovereign? Yeah. Yeah, but right. it, there is honestly a lot of comfort in knowing that God is sovereign. Right, right. But you're right, because sometimes in the moment of us being uncomfortable, yeah. we get these little pat answers, these over spiritual answers. Yeah. You're right. God is totally sovereign. You and I get that. But yep. that's not what exactly they're wanting. Yeah, that's so, not. Yeah. So it's I think proclaiming Christ in that, though, is just, again, reminding them it's like, hey. This situation that you're going through right now, you're not going by alone. Mm. You're not unnoticed. Mm. Uh, I think one of the th greatest things like the on the elder retreat that we had where he's saying that, you know, the spirit prays on our behalf. And yes. even being reminding us of that, uh, like we don't know what to say yeah. or how to say it. Yeah. But even in that moment, if we are his, mm. we have an advocate even praying for us. Amen. To the Father. So, uh, I, you know, a, a lot of it, I think. I even alluded to it at the very end of like our purpose, our driving force, our passion starts with Christ. Mm. And it doesn't matter what situation you're going through, our looking, our resting, our, our relying place should be Christ. Right. And I think that's how we proclaim Christ, because once we start living that life and abiding in him, our lives look different. Our lives are radically changed and it changes everything around us. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Love it. I love it. I love it. Well, hey, we're going to end this thing on a good note. Thank you, Ben. Absolutely. I appreciate it, brother. We're looking forward to the next time. Uh, Podcast Marco. <laughs> Hashtag. Hashtag. Uh, <laughs> again, um, hey, 937-404-1207. Remember, um, life groups are starting up. So, hey, if you're not in a life group, get in a life group. Y'all, it's been a lifesaver for me and my wife. And I know Oh, for you good. and Amanda too. Yeah. Um, so hey, is your life group full? Uh, I think we actually had to close. We have 21 kids. Oh my word. Yeah, we have a lot of kids. And so we had to shut it down. We have, I think, six or seven couples, but we have 21 total kids. Yeah, I know. That's why. So they can't start their own life group? They can, they can the kids can. Yeah, sure. <laughs> by all means. Go find a house. Go somewhere else. My word, yeah. dude. Yeah. So uh, well, hey, we'll be praying for you now. Yeah, we love every second of it. We love the families we, we're a part of. So uh we wouldn't change a thing. Hey, well, we love you guys, man. And um, we're looking forward to worshiping with you guys on Sunday. And remember. Christ has done all the work, so we're driving it home. Driving it home. Peace. Oh.